This movie covers the new G3 continuity option for Surface Tools in Alias 2011. G3 continuity has now been added to the Surface Fillet, the Freeform Blend and the Profile Blend tools. In the option window, G3 has been added to the choice of continuity setting and what used to be called curvature has been renamed G2 curvature. I want to start by explaining how G3 helps us build smooth, continuous models like this from separate surface patches. If we look at the outline curves for this shape, where there's a sharp connection between two curves, we have G0, or position continuity. On the next corner, I've built a standard circular fillet, and this has given me G1, or tangent continuity, with two CVs for each end. Next, I've built a softer blend, and this has more CVs which can give me G2 or curvature continuity. And finally I have a G3 blend with two extra CVs to give an even softer result. This terminology relates to how the radius values of the curves are matched where they meet. For G1 the radius values are very different. G2 is smoother because the radius values are the same where the two curves meet. And this is also the case for G3. But G3 also matches the rate of change of the radius of each curve as it approaches the join. But this can only really be evaluated by using a curvature plot. And now you can see that the G3 has a softer lead-in to the join than the G2. And now I'll show you how this works with the surface tools starting with the surface fillet. If I toggle the wireframe on for this concept model, you can see that it's only been built to sharp edges, and the next stage might be to soften these off with fillets. I've trimmed out three sections of the front wing surfaces so that I can build three different fillets. And on the surface fillet option window you can see the new G3 curvature, but I'll start with a G1 circular fillet. And then I'll create a G2 curvature fillet. And both of these were in previous versions of Alias. And finally, the new G3 curvature fillet. You can see that the G2 has created a degree 5 surface with three rows of CVs to control the continuity on each edge. And the G3 has built a degree 7 surface with four rows of CVs for each edge. In the shaded view, you can see a big difference between the G1 and the G2, but a much smaller difference between the G2 and the G3. And with the zebra stripes, the G3 is more consistent and slightly more circular than the G2, but the difference is very subtle. So as always, we really need to use a curvature plot to accurately see what's going on. So I'll apply some sections with the curvature turned on. And again, the difference between the G1 and the G2 is very clear. And you can see that the G2 has a slightly more peaky character than the G3. The difference in continuity can be exaggerated if I use the peak curvature option to make a more extreme fillet shape. And now you can see that the G2 matches the radius value, but the rate of change can vary but the G3 always controls the rate of change going into the blend to keep a smoother profile. Here, the fillet tool has been used like a round surface to soften off these packaging designs. This first model has a standard round surface, which is G1. The second one has a G2 curvature surface fillet and the third a G3 curvature fillet. It's difficult to see the subtle differences on this screen, but if I zoom in and switch between a normal round fillet and a G3 fillet, you can see it much better. I'll go back to the round, and now the G3. Now I want to have a look at the freeform and profile blend tools. 
Here I've got some carryover components for an open back truck and some new scan data for a modified spoiler or sunshield on the rear window. I've got a top and a side surface and I want to build a blend between them. I'll use the freeform blend and if I start with tangent on both sides I get a degree 3 surface which is single span. With G2 I get a degree 5 surface, again single span, and with G3 I get degree 7. I really like that the surfaces are built with exactly the right number of CVs to keep the surface taut as well as smooth. And if I check it with the zebra stripes, we've got a pretty good result. But when I'm working at this level of continuity, I always need to use a curvature plot to accurately evaluate what's going on. And while that looks OK, it doesn't really have the character that I want. But I've got a lot of control with the freeform blend. These shape sliders let me nudge the position of the CVs until I get the shape and the design that I'm after. so I can get a really nice curvature plot and a regular flowing layout of CVs. Next I want to have a look at the profile blend to build the leading edge joining the upper and lower surfaces and I'll start by creating some guide curves. I'll use a blend curve and set it to degree 7 in anticipation of building the smoother blend. And I can choose G3 continuity for each blend point. I'll do a second curve on this lower edge. And again I'll use degree 7 and choose G3 for both blend points. So now I can use the Profile Blend tool and I'll choose G3 Curvature for both sides. And then I'll select both edges and then the Profile Curves. I get quite a heavy surface but it's very quick to build and quick to adjust with construction history. And it gives me a smooth result that's good enough for concept work or when I'm having to iterate lots of design changes and I'm working to a deadline. Again, I need the curvature plots to really show me the quality of the surfaces. But if we have a closer look, you can see that the profile blend has actually created a really good result. On this product design model, I was curious to see if the new G3 freeform blend could be used to build this corner surface. Using the shape sliders I could get the shape at the bottom edge that I wanted. But clearly the blend will only give me continuity on the two edges that I picked. So I'll need to fix this top edge. It's joining onto a trim surface. So if I get rid of the old curve on surface I can use the align tool with the project option to match the top edge of my blend to that top surface. But the chances are that my CVs will have moved, so I need to check my two edges again. But in this case, all I needed to do was just snap a CV back into position to get successful continuity all round. There's a few CVs that could be sweetened up if I spent some more time on them. But overall, it's a really good result achieved very quickly. And what I'm finding is that the kind of surface quality that you previously only see in automotive design is now being demanded in product and packaging design. So the new G3 curvature continuity settings are available in Alias Automotive 2011 where they provide a quick modelling option to complement the traditional hand sculpting skills. But they're also available in the Alias Surface product where they can be used to enhance the quality of surface blends in packaging and in product designs.